before I get into my presentation, um, I want to talk about jumping. Now, failing forward, we're going to be talking about doing things that we're afraid of. And jumping, and if you can see it, take off all your clothes. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Um, so much space here. It's incredible. Um, so I want to talk about jump and take off all your clothes. Now, jumping is scary. And taking off your clothes is even scarier. I know that. <laughs> For me, it is. I don't know about you guys. But it's a presentation on failing gloriously. Now, two things. Um, Jumping for failing forward and taking your clothes off because of spoken word poetry. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Rudy Francisco says, who here knows Rudy Francisco? OK, I'll, I'll show you more later. The only difference between a stripper and a spoken word artist is your pole reaches the ceiling. Mine has a microphone attached. <laughs> so he's talking about spoken word as a form of confession, which not everyone does, but it's what I'm going to be doing Maybe a little bit tonight, if I can. Um, but we're going to be talking about taking your clothes off and looking at yourself for who you are and understanding yourself. And from there, knowing how to jump and when to jump. And I'm going to be talking tonight about the stages of jumping. Before that, though, I'm going to be performing a little poem. <laughs> because I don't like talking about myself, I'm just going to let the poems talk for themselves. This is a poem about your mama. <laughs> Your mama will suffer through supermarket tantrums, midnight diaper changes, and children who want more than their small arms can hold. Cries of anguish coming from their hungry, hungry hippo souls, which begin the age-old method of scolding. My mother battles cancer like it's a stubborn stain inches away from molding, brushes her hands of it when it is done, and rebuilds life without one concern for the turning of chapters or the passing of time, because before you can tell her, she will tell you, you are sublime. Oh, wow, I'm missing a page here, guys. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue. But my mother spends as much time providing for us as possible, caring and cleaning and cooking and talking and working her days away for a slip of pay, which keeps the hunger pains away. She thinks and prays for us every night. She worries and fears for the day we leave or the day she does. She does not know her own happiness because wrapped inside our own, like a taco or the chemo, when her hair grew back, we danced around the flames of a bonfire made of her curly-haired wig. When she met my brother-in-law for the first time, we turned to awkward statues. When she told him and his friends about the wild days in the heydays, reading the Karma Sutra, she's a certified stroppy badass. But the truth is, she accepts the love she thinks she deserves, and she deserves so much more. And when my father left, she held us up above the tides of tomorrow, and then we knew that she was too good for us. Truth is, I know it hurt her when I told her I didn't believe in God. But the truth is, I didn't want to lie to her like we did when we told her she was going to be OK through the tubes and medication, de deciding what the doctors will or will not say. But she lived, and she lives, and she'll continue to give everything to everyone every day for as long as she can. You see, your mama probably bakes cookies, helps you with your homework, and is a lovely person. But mine has a smile like a lazy Sunday afternoon with extra sunrise. Her eyes are piercing veils of suspicion mixed with love and indescribable pride at her miniature masterpieces. Feast your eyes on the wonder of a mother who cares more for her family than her own body, but gives us the sureness of the breeze that wafts into valleys and seas of the fear of death. She is showing you that even in the worst, the best is found. Even with the night lights on, there is still a badass around. My mother had a life of her own once. And she gave it up to become a killer of cancers, a burner of wigs, and a bringer-upper of babies. Most mothers I know are pretty incredible, but my mother is pure amazing. So here's what I'm going to talk about. Thank you. I'll clean this up later. Um, the preparation. Can you say this with me? Prepare for success. Accept defeat. Accept defeat. Now, the preparation is not a moment. It is a lifestyle. And if anyone, who's in the creative industry here? I'm sorry. I'm not a startup person. I would love to be in business. But as a creative person tonight, I'm going to talk about creativity and the idea of, 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 of living a lifestyle where failure is OK. I talked to a friend a while ago about this. And he said, I fail every single day I make things. Because every time I make things, 
it is a failure, but I learn from it so I can create better things from that. And that's about the creative process. That's, all, that's what it's all about. So prepare for success is saying, I know I'm going to win, but I'm okay with failing. That's the mindset that we have to live with every single time we create something. And it's impossible, it's hard because everyone's judging us and we have to exceed expectations. But it's a matter of not caring and focusing on content. Whatever it is you do, whatever it is. And um, this is a part of something. Edges stare at us like diseases we have not yet cured, daring us onward to live. Being, not being scared, but knowing that an edge is there and that we eventually have to take that leap as well. Can we go to the next one? The jump. Legs braced, kick down at the earthquakes hiding in your voice box. Do not listen. Can everyone say respect fear with me? Respect fear. Don't let it govern you. Don't let it govern you. Thank you. Great crowd. Um, this is all about knowing that you will fail, or you might fail, or it could happen, right? But the fear is there. When you take the jump is the next process, right? The jump is what we are most afraid of. But if we can learn to control it, if we can learn to say the fear is there and it's okay and I'm okay with that and I'm going to use that in my creative process as well, we can't let it govern us. We can't be afraid to perform, to get up on stage and whatever, do whatever we have to say. Can we go to the next one, please? Uh, thank you. Um, before I continue, I'm going to do another piece. Hopefully I have all the poems for this. It's called The Generation of Gaps, and um, I wrote it about dealing with failure, and as people, as, as especially, um, well, I'm 23 years old, and it's a scary time to be, because we're dealing with a lot of things that, that we have to deal with out of growing out of our youth or whatever. This is called A Generation of Gaps. They didn't tell us there would be nights where our dreams can't breathe. From reaching the bar, our parents etched into our DNA entitled sleeves, drawn on with alcoholic pens lacking ink. Two, they didn't tell us there would be the sense of belonging and longing to sink into something we cannot grasp, we hoped would last. We saw it in a movie once, and now we only dream of happy endings. Three, they didn't tell us there would be no endings, let alone happy ones. Four, they never taught us that life lessons only happen when you've lived and bad days happen whenever they want to. Five, they never told us that heartbreak would begin and end with daisies. And sometimes you can't tell the difference between love and escaping daily. Six, they told us that there was an answer after every question mark. That when we graduate, our future would unfold like an ancient water park, blossoming like waves upon stepping stones in a garden full of the right commercially driven paths. They told us that this is water, but they didn't show us how to pass or keep afloat. I'm not angry. I'm just saying they could have let us know. Instead, we are caught, a generation of liars founded by desires to be found and valued. Thank you for never telling us we were. Thank you for never, thank you for these nights of tired train tracks singing Kumbaya by the light of an oncoming truth. They never taught us how to live, but they did teach us how to let it overcome you. I'm not angry. I just want to start a riot in every street with my name on it so I can say I've done something worth shouting about so I don't have to face my untouched ceiling anymore. The one they placed when they told us we would be successful, but never told us what success was. Just because we went to the right schools and met the right people, it doesn't mean shit. They were lessons on silent noise, not telling us that we were their future because they were our past. They kept the darkness away and drew out our paths until they caved and we found the holes they had left behind. Here is where my mother went bankrupt and thought herself a failure. Here is where my sister got bullied for being foreign when we tried to start over. Here is where my father palmed a cigarette when he told himself he was done. Here is where I bide my time on the edge of loss, losing it every single night. Here are the points of lives tainted by unseen truth. Connect them with a ballpoint pen, write them into the light, and show them for what they are. A generation of liars telling us how to lie. A generation of sophists turning me into an I. Seven. They didn't tell us about the edge or about the jump we take every day. Fall well or don't fall at all. Either way, we are lost in the haze of the last, looking up to tomorrow from yesterday, still filling in the gaps of our past. Thank you.
So that's the problem. That's what we're trying to deal with, right? Failure and how we're stepping up from that. Can we go to the next slide? Thank you. The fall. So after the jump, after the preparation, we have the fall. And this is the scariest part because we're going, oh my god, what's going to happen now? Doubts settle as clouds providing us with bedfellows. Wrestle them for the pillow. It will be worth it. We are each our own instrument. That's actually really cool. Thank you. Fall with purpose. So when, when we fail, it's OK. It's fine. Failure is not an issue. As long as we fi fail, fall with purpose, as long as we know what we're doing. If I want to make a video, if I, as a filmmaker, if I want to create something, I'm going to do it a few times before I get really good at it. I'm going to choose a specific content. I want to do documentaries. So I'm going to create a documentary about a specific topic by the fourth, fifth, I mean, startups, everything. It's a matter of repetition until we learn from our own mistakes. And falling with purpose is knowing this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do this again and again and again before I get it right. But that's OK. We are each our own instrument. An acting teacher actually told me this once. And it was the best piece of advice I've ever had. We are each our own instrument. I want, to th want you to think about that for a second. Does anyone have any thoughts what that could mean? I'm going to pull from the audience. So H hands off if you think you know what it means. No? No takers? Sorry? You have your own individual perspective. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So we're each made for something. Is that what you're saying? Right. So that. But not just that. There's so many facets to this. Where we have, we are each our own instrument. We are each made to do something. And we have to treat ourselves, our body, as an instrument. We have to respect it. And we have to know when we fail, when we fail that we're going to be doing something that is key into our speciality, as he said. Thank you. Can we go to the next one? Sorry, next one? Thank you. The plunge. Now, this is the part which sucks. It does. Create and strive through failure. And don't break down breakthrough. Now, don't break down breakthrough is actually uh, something my mother uh, once said. She's over there. Say hi. I, I'm not a speaker. She's the speaker in our family. So this feels very weird for me to be here. Um, but don't break down breakthrough is, is something that, that we've kind of grown up with in our entire life, in, our, in my family. And it's a matter of making that choice, saying, yes, I will do this, or no, I can't. And it's about saying, yes, I can do this every single time, that I can break through, that I will break through, and having that mentality, which I can, the amount of positivity in this place is amazing. I think you guys already know what I'm talking about. Create and strive through failure. It's about knowing and accepting, accepting defeat and saying, yes, I can do this. And even though I have failed, I'm going to pick myself back up and swim. Revel in the shock of survival, breathing in failure through the nose, letting it out in joyous screams. Joyous screens is something everyone should do. We shouldn't be afraid of that. Okay. Next. And this is going to be my last poem for tonight. Um, it's called Jump, and it's a poem about action. But tonight, I kind of need some help from you, and I want you all to be my words. Now, when I put my hand up, I want you to say jump. Jump. Louder. Jump. Louder. Jump. And when I raise it up, and I go like that, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and when I do this, I want you to go jump, jump, jump. Join me. Jump, 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 jump. Very good, very good. I love it. Okay, so ready? This is called jump. I want you to like skinned wings staring at sunrises, knowing that today you will set these sails of defiance afloat. Like painful reminders of the voices you have chosen to forget. Jump. Like your heart when she plays your favorite song. Jump. Like they will remember you for it. If your teeth blaring screams shock waves of people into silence, they will. Jump. Like there are fires in your bellies and gravity is a well that in which you can quench yourself. Jump. Like your actions will outline the history books, their dust will become your shadows. Jump. Because if you stare at the rocks any longer, you will lose the pieces of reason that carry you. I want you to. Jump. I want you to. Jump. I want you to. Jump. Ready? 
Jump, 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 jump. Be critical of your limbs, but don't beat your fists into submission. Listen to your body. Your body is beautiful and it will tell you beautiful things. Sing your acceptance. Tell everyone you meet that it's okay. It's okay to be broken as long as you don't lose the pieces. Don't lose your reasons. Don't become a jigsaw of what you see on TV. Just do. Don't say. Don't think. Don't pray. Just jump. Because Icarus is calling you, the sun is asking after you, and the world, well, the world can't wait to meet you. Jump. Thank you.